As a lonely child, I don't think anyone ever spoke to me, at least my teenage years, is in a more personal level than Eminem. I literally painted an entire skateboard base around some shady and included all of his nicknames on it. This is to say I love Eminem. He will probably always be my favorite rapper and perhaps artist of all time. Up there in the echelon of people like Billy Joel, Lord, and Daft Punk. This is to say, however, that I also kind of hate him. And I find this dichotomy interesting enough to make an entire video on. These are all my personal opinions on the matter, of course. I have no authority on the subject. Eminem is a powerful lyricist. His rhyme scheme is only really comparable to Biggie, and even then I think Marshall is superior. However, what he actually says with his words is always to hit or miss. Now, I don't think music should have to have a powerful lyric message. I want to make a video defending mumble rap and how it merges languages and boils language down to its very essence. Many linguistic professionals have spoken on the influence of Young Thug specifically, and I don't think he understated how many barriers the rapper broke down and how much he changed the game. Eminem isn't exactly one of those kinds of artists. In fact, I'm pretty sure he hates mumble rap. However, his appeal, to me at least, is the same appeal I find in someone like Lil Uzi Vert. It's pleasing sounds at pleasing times, which allows me to think more creatively. That, to me, is what music boiled down with essential elements is. The message is in the notes, not always the poetry of the lyrics. It's in the sound itself. To say otherwise is to say classical music has no message, no real driven passion behind it, and that's obviously just simply not true. So I love Eminem on this level as a talented rhyme schemist, but as I grow older, I find myself becoming more and more disillusioned with, with his actual lyrical messages. This isn't to say Eminem doesn't talk about anything I can relate to. The Monster speaks on OCD in a relatively relatable way, and songs like Space Bound are all still pretty good love songs. But very beautiful and insane out there, to use Relapse as an example, underrated album by the way, there is a 3AM and same song and dance. I've always said that while I love Eminem, half of his songs are just unlistenable, and not even just on a lyrics basis. The songs just suck to listen to. But when talking about the lyrics, we can't ignore the messaging that M usually has. Now, I'm not here to claim that Marshall the person is a homophobe, or believes in domestic violence or SA. However, what I will say is that he has perpetuated a culture that hosts such ideals. While his duet with Elton John was a momentous occasion for music and a powerful stance from M, it doesn't suddenly erase all of his lyrics that came before, and certainly not the ones that came after. Even now, he's using gay as an insult. And before you want to comment, lol, another Gen Zer trying to cancel Eminem, nice try, Lib. Let's settle down and discuss this like normal adults. No. I'm not trying to cancel Eminem. My channel has 5,000 subscribers anyway. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm just stating my opinions here. Take that with what you will. Anyway, impressionable white kids, Eminem's main audience, are going to be swayed by their favorite rappers saying homophobic things. Or especially songs like Kim or Just the Two of Us, where he explicitly kills the mother of his child. Well, it's obvious how that can be a bad message to kids that may already be thinking about those things. And real ones know the song is just the two of us instead of 97 Bonnie and Clyde. Again, it seems to say that Marshall as a person is a horrible human being. You can have that opinion based on just his music, you do you, but I don't hold such an opinion. But I think it's rather obvious how Eminem upholds and perpetuates a culture that is okay with, and sometimes even promotes, things like homophobia, SA, and DV. What's more interesting to me, however, is why this change ever took place. While Eminem had some risky songs in his extremely early rap days, like songs about black people, I can't find the song on YouTube, but I remember it back in the day, so take that particular part of the video with a grain of salt if you wish. But his early discography was actually extremely wholesome. Infinite, his first official studio album, has some of the most hopeful and wholesome songs I've ever heard, with songs like It's Okay. However, how many of you even heard of what is arguably his best album? I'd wager not everyone has even heard the titular song, Infinite. But you all know my name is, so why is that? If you know even a few facts about Eminem, you already know he was discovered by Dr. Dre. But how did this happen? Firstly and most famously, Em participated in several rap battles, of which the footage got sent to Dre. 
and Eminem being perhaps the best freestyle rapper I've at least ever heard, even better than Little Dicky, and yes, I mean that statement wholeheartedly, it was no wonder that Dre took an interest. However, it was his second studio album, the Slim Shady EP, not the LP, after Dre listened to it, that really sold him on Marshall as an artist. The Slim Shady EP was a huge departure from the pure sound and message of Infinite. It's grimy, and better reflects the area where Marshall grew up with the creation of the infamous Slim Shady, a representation of the repressed feelings of Eminem as a person and as an artist. Slim embodies not just a controversy as he's falsely depicted today, but instead a raw passion and frantic fire of being somebody in an area that nobody ever escapes. It reflects the area that nobody ever escapes. To raise his newly born daughter, to rebel against a society that didn't accept him. Again, haters and lovers alike will boil down the Slim Shady persona is simply one that gives no fucks, and that isn't afraid to get cancelled, as someone who is controversial simply just to be so. And I can understand that because that's somewhat what Slim Shady has become today, at least the perception of everyone else around him. Marshall is a millionaire now. He's not wondering how he's going to provide for his child, not stuck in a marriage with a wife he clearly hates, not being essayed by his stepfather as described in several songs, but insane comes to mind first. He survived his trauma and environment, but as trauma tends to do, it sticks with him. While to everyone else, some shitty spouts homophobic slurs just for the sake of it, to me he does so based on his own trauma. It doesn't make it right by any means, but it does make it understandable. It doesn't take away from the culture he has perpetuated, but it certainly does make sense. However, even if that trauma remains, some shitty persona seems... I don't know, hollow? He doesn't have that same fire. He doesn't have the desperation he once had. The persona eventually changed to relenting his own fame, while Eminem the persona talked about his own drug addiction. So it has evolved, but nowadays? I don't know. It just doesn't have the same fire behind it anymore. Which is fine, I guess. No, I haven't listened to much of the death of some shady, but I do plan on doing that. So we'll see how his death is portrayed and introspected upon. But all of what I've said seemingly explains why Marshall has some shady persona. It doesn't explain why this version of himself is the one that took off. As opposed to the self-expressed and infinite. And I'll keep the section short. To state it simply, well, controversy sells. Many kids and adults alike feel like Eminem speaks for the silent majority. Where that even really exists, it still sells. I know Eminem was pivotal for me while going through puberty and navigating heartbreak. But I know myself, and I certainly know I used to be a lot more misogynistic and homophobic. Racist, even. I've luckily grown out of those bad traits, at least as much as humanly possible for a straight white man to do so. But it's just something that the peak of my M enjoyment came during those times in my life. And now that I've grown out of that, I hardly ever listen to him anymore. I feel like I don't have to explain how that works. I think this goes back to the culture that he perpetuates. He is speaking to people already susceptible to those beliefs. Hello everyone. I started a Discord server. The link will be in the description. Well, that's all folks. And as always, thank you for watching.